imagine comes the question of what happens to us when we die. Even though in Hellenism we don't really focus on death and what we do in the afterlife because the main focus of Hellenic polytheism is what we do in this life and how we affect people and others with the way we live now. The question is still wondered, what happens when we die? So whether you believe in the traditional sense of the afterlife of what happens, that's up to you and that differs from person to person, I'm not going to answer that question. But I thought it would be interesting to share with you guys um, how the Greeks and the ancients would view at a certain time how they viewed the afterlife. How, what happens when we die? Who do we see and meet? And where do we go? And that's what this video is about. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll talk to you. Oh, and by the way, you're dead on a journey. But did you know you're already dead? So what happens next? God Hermes greets you as you take your final breath and step into the land of the dead. Not only is Hermes an Olympian, but he is the one who brings the dead to the underworld, a place where everybody goes. You follow Hermes and he leads you and all the others of the recently dead to the entrance of the underworld, also known as Hades. As you wait with the others by the river, you notice that the underworld is deep within the earth. It is sunless, cold, in a dark kingdom ruled by two deities, King Hades and Queen Persephone. As you stand on the shore of the underworld, you notice a river with a ship and a ferryman ahead of you. This ferryman is Charon, and he will take you to your next destination, but only if you have the fare to pay the cost. Luckily for you, your family has placed coin underneath your tongue while they prepared your body for your funerary rites back on Earth. You notice some on the shore were not so likely, and they began to cry, for they are forever stuck, and they cannot cross or pay the ferryman to continue their journey. But luckily you find the coin in your pocket and hand it to Charon. Once you hand your coin, you join the others aboard, and the ship begins to cross the river to the entrance to the gates of Hades. And there's no joy, there is no laughter, and everyone is just as confused as you as to what will happen next. And you never thought the afterlife was going to be like this. Eventually you begin to see the gates of the underworld, but become even more afraid as you hear what appears to be monstrous growls. As you draw closer to the gates, you finally see what the noise and where it's coming. The gates of Hades are guarded by a giant dog, but this is no ordinary canine. This canine has multiple heads. It is Cerberus, with eyes that flash like fire, who has jagged teeth and three tongues per mouth. Cerberus's tail slowly morphs into a serpent with venomous heads at the end, and more serpents sprout from his body. Cerberus is there to guard the gates. All must enter, but no mortal shall ever leave. The boat comes ashore. You and the others follow the path as the gates of Hades open. Very cautiously you walk past the monstrous beast and try not to make eye contact with the creature. Others make that mistake and find no pleasure in their curiosity as you hear screams and wails all around you, and you are thankful for a stronger will. The path seems to be bleaker and darker as you journey and continue. Strangely, the path that you all follow just leads to a giant circular room. In what appears to be no time, the figure, three figures walk from the shadows and appear before you. These three figures are the judges, Rhadamanthus, Minos, and Achus. They are to pass judgment on you and all the others with you for the deeds they have performed in life. These judges will determine your future. As you await your judgment, you have flashbacks to your mortal life on earth. But you can't remember, were you one of the good or were you one of the wicked? But you do remember the teachings of the elders of the realms of Hades and the three options souls could journey after death, depending on the life they had lived. The one everyone loved and hoped for was Elysium, the Elysian fields. The Isles of the Blessed where only the most exceptional mortals were privileged with a life free of toils and pains. And there is the Asphodel Fields where most go. It is a realm of utter neutrality. Souls of the dead, also known as Shades, wander mindlessly from drinking 
the waters of the river Lethe, a river of forgetfulness and oblivion all must drink from. They remember no one and nothing of their previous life above ground, and they eventually will fade into nothingness or hopefully one day have another chance in life in reincarnation. But until then, they mindlessly wait and wander. And then there's Tartarus. Hell in every sense of the word. It is the deepest gulf beneath the earth. The gates whereof are of iron and the threshold of bronze. Originally the dungeon of the rebels against the divine order of Olympus, Tartarus eventually ended up housing the worst of perpetrators. Destined here to eternally endure punishments fitting their earthly crimes. As the judges begin to speak, you begin to tremble, hoping that the latter realm of Tartaros be not your eternal home.